Mm, take that, law books. According to marketers, the trick to being successful on YouTube with topics like this is to promise something outrageous in the title of the video and then wait until the end of the video to deliver. To bump up that watch time. That is why I'm not going to tell you my three best tips for acing your law school exams, which are love it, specifically schedule in a particular way for it, and get real world practical. You're just going to have to wait. You're forced to study ethics in law for good reasons. I know for a fact that if I did not have natural curiosity and actually enjoy the learning process, studying law would have been the Oxford definition of hell. Thanks to your feedback and interest in my earlier video, I'll pop a link if you want to watch it, about being a barrister, I thought I'd share the whole truth about studying law, just making the worst jokes. I'm going to share with you what I learned along the way. Firstly, nobody in my family was a lawyer, nobody studied law, so my keen interest in it was kind of freak. Spending at least four years studying full time and then going on to the bar exams and spending more time before being admitted, I found there were three critical things that helped me stick with it and actually pass my exams. Firstly, you've got to love it. Without some kind of curiosity about the law or the procedure and without some kind of joy in the learning process, you're going to find it a really tough, hard grind. Somebody explained studying law to me this way. They said, oh, you're going to love it if you enjoy reading a telephone directory. And at the time that I was studying, that made complete sense. But for the younger generation, you're going to love it if you enjoy reading your mobile phone contract fine print again and again, which you should enjoy because you're about to start studying law. And you should be really interested in reading the fine print because we all do, don't we? Yes, yes. Hindsight is always 2020 vision and looking back, I can now see three questions that might help anyone who's interested in study law actually determine whether it is for them. Firstly, what inspires you to study law in the first place? What kind of subject areas are you interested in? And do you have a role model or a mentor that you look up to aspire to be or would love to work with. For me, it was Jeffrey Robinson. I did see, well, truth be told, I think I watched too much Perry Mason growing up and I thought that that was just so epic and I wanted to be him. Then later on, I came across Jeffrey Robinson, who is still alive, which is amazing because I Googled him recently. He would be going around the world, appearing on human rights cases, and I found it very interesting. But I also realized I had a real reason for wanting to study law. So that's a big question to ask. What is your reason for studying? Having your parental approval is just not going to be enough because we have to live with ourselves. You live with you and like all things in life, your parents are going to pass, but you are going to end up having to live with the decisions that you've made for your own life. If the sole reason for getting into law is to make lots of money, I know that right now in this kind of world where the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and starting your own business is not out of reach, that there can be a lot more money to be made from being a business owner than actually being a lawyer. Plus also, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, it's often a lot less costly at the outset to start a business than it is to fork out a lot of money for a law degree, check out the prices. I didn't realize how much international students pay to study in Australia. Oh, so painful. Some subjects are just going to be so hard to study. There were some fluffy subjects like social justice and even constitutional law where I just had no interest in them and I didn't find them easy because I was bored by them. Sometimes it was simply the way the subject was taught by that particular teacher. It was dry, dull, there weren't colourful stories. I really wanted to study law because I wanted to hear the colourful stories, which is why criminal law and tort law, which is like personal injury law, were way more interesting to me than taxation law. But even when I was enjoying the subject, it didn't mean that the subjects were easy. Just because something hard doesn't mean automatically give up on it. There's a huge difference between something being hard and something absolutely sucking. Hard is temporary, but at no point during that difficulty did I ever think, oh, this sucks so much that's so emotionally unrewarding that I'm wondering why I'm even studying law or even existing. Sucks is that feeling, that heavy knowing that it's not for you and you're really meant to move on. Electives. Towards the end of your degree, sometimes it can be a real struggle town to try and feel <laughs> all the credit points that you need to have at the end of your degree to make up for your qualification. About the third or the final year, if you're studying full time, it's going to get really challenging because by that stage, often study fatigue sets in and you just want to get it over and done with. What helped me was that I chose subjects that I was interested in, like IT, technology law, media law. And secondly, one really helpful tip when I went through law school 
was choose subjects that are easy. And by easy, I mean easy to understand. I made a lot of friends in law school with people who were about two years ahead of me because I love learning from those who are in front of me and they just were a lot more mature minded. It was recommended that I study family law. That was a subject that I would not have chosen. I was almost opposite anti wanting to go down that path, but I was so glad I did. I took their advice. They said it's an easy 12 credit points and it was true. It had concepts in it that I could understand. At 19, I had no life experience to understand that people often use their children as warfare tools in their divorce cases. Family law had a really neat linear structure so I could understand all of the concepts. Unlike reading parliamentary Hansard and legislative bylaws, which are just like, oh, scheduling specific study time. Oh, this is so critical because if you don't schedule specific time to study each week regularly and stick to it, what I found happens is you end up cramming for the exam, you're stressed out, it's last minute, you don't do terribly well, your sleep suffers and nothing good comes from that. Just wasn't a good strategy. What worked for me was a 50-10 hourly study. I would study for 50 minutes in the hour and for 10 minutes I would have a break. This might be something that you have to build up to. You might only be able to study for 45 minutes or for even half an hour. It just depends, work your way up because I developed a very strong attention and focus muscle during my time in university, which has really paid off in life as well. So if you can develop it as you're studying, it's a superpower now, especially with all of our distractions. If you're able to study for 20 minutes, take a break, another 20 minutes. I found breaking up my study blocks with physical movement was ideal because you need to get up and move to let things sink in and work through your system. So get up and walk around the block, walk around your house, just get up and move. I was making myself cups of tea on the hour. So I was hydrating myself at the same time, but it was a way of having some simple process to stop my brain from overthinking and do not sit there and just open up a new tab on your computer. That is not taking a physical break. I found that getting up was really the best habit to get into to help you recharge and then come back and study further. I will mention again a helpful organizer online, which is Notion that can help you plan your study and structure your week so that you can put in the subjects that you need to study ahead of your exam. So you give yourself plenty of time and don't leave it to the last minute. I use Notion at the moment to organize these very YouTube videos. These topics, I have ideas, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're just absolute garbage, but <laughs> until I have it all laid out and I can see what might be beneficial and what might be of value, if you're into online organizers, you might find Notion incredibly helpful. So check it out, I'll leave a link below. Feel free to have a play. Also, it's free. You can also schedule your reward breaks. So mine was a cup of tea walking around the place. You've got to work with what works for you. If I had a good week where I studied well, often I would reward myself. I was a very big video gamer, so I would give myself a break and play video game, but not for like all day. This was a scheduled break for a reward. I'm pretty sure you might be the same way, but all stick and no carrot just doesn't work for me. The whole idea of a schedule is that it's not meant to be a torture device. It's meant to help you shepherd your own attention and focus and reach the goals that you're aiming for. So schedule in a little fun, make it fun. And with the scheduling of time as well, something that helped me retain the information that I was studying was having a multi-layered engagement approach. So if I was listening to a lecture, like an audio tape, or I was reading a book, I would physically write notes. There's something about writing that helps retain. I think because you're physically involved in it, you're writing the key points, critical things that make you think, ah, oh, that's, you know, you'll learn about the Latin topics, ratio desidendi and obita dictum. So the most important pieces to take away from any legal case, jot that down. Remember the name of the case, jot down the point or the biggest lesson learned from that case. And then later on, you can actually read your notes, record them. So then you've got an audio file that you can play back to yourself as you're going for a walk or on the weekend to help you again retain that information. And that's why planning this is so important and not leaving it to the night before the exam. You get to reinforce what you've learned and you've written down. And this helps in two ways. If you've got a closed book exam where you need to memorize, you've already done this. You've already taught yourself the most important pieces in the textbooks, in the lectures, in the case law. So when you've got a closed book exam, you've retained so much more. And the second one, even if it's an open book exam, it doesn't mean a free cheat because you don't want to spend that whole exam with all your materials open, but you haven't trained yourself to remember 
what was that case law? What was that main point? And then you're fumbling through all your materials, wasting time because you're on a clock for the exam. The more you can remember, the more you can spend your time writing good legal advice and not waste it just trying to look up which page of the book was that at and I can't remember what that case was, but it had something with a donkey in it or something, you know, that kind of thing. And my final tip is get practical. Get practical as soon as you can when you're studying law. Sit in courtrooms and watch proceedings. The case law and the court rules and all of, all of those formalities that come into play. I really feel that when you see the law courts and the justice system in action, it gives you a good sense of whether that legal arena is really for you before you go ahead and study law and get fully immersed and then you have that the sunk cost effect where you can't give up now because you put so much work and money into it. So yeah, getting some work experience before you finish your law degree. I applied from year one when I was in law school to all the firms that were willing to take on a work experience student from university. I particularly was interested in criminal law, so I definitely was placed with barristers, with their chambers, and also with the Supreme Court. I also did, on top of that, volunteer work with these criminal law firms. Most universities will run some kind of work experience program, so get onto those early in year one. The law school's student administration office should be able to point you in the right direction as to how to apply to that. Little side note, just be mindful when you do do work experience there are some firms or some lawyers who might take complete advantage of the fact they're getting some free labor. I worked for one firm in Brisbane where two partners literally argued because one of them was trying to give me paralegal work or quasi paralegal work going through some court briefs and the other partner was almost outraged like what are you doing You're giving actual work she's just a work experience student so Bear that in mind. The second part with work experience and is be aware that you're a young person and you might get hit on by some of the lawyers that you're assigned to work with. I mentioned this because it did happen to me and I'm assuming that I wasn't the only one that that happened to. I had married lawyers try to get me into a hotel room. I had, it's very common as well for lawyers to try and get you drunk. They think it's very funny, particularly in certain high stress law practice areas. I had some men think that I was there to make them cups of tea, which was hilarious. I do make a good cup of tea. So you might come across some quite colorful experiences and always trust your instinct with these things. I didn't get into hot water or anything. I just politely extracted myself from the situation. <laughs> Never to work again. No, just kidding. It's the wild west out there and it can be quite a sheltered place to be in university. So just keep your eyes open. Go and meet people actually practicing law. Sometimes the universities will have lecturers and tutors who are more on the academic side and they haven't actually they're not actual current practicing lawyers. When you work with lawyers who are real world exposed every single day, it gives you knowledge and insight that you're just not going to get at university. And also by showing up, volunteering and just getting out there and not staying in the little sheltered university world, you might actually get offered a job. That happened to me when I was 19. I was offered a job with the federal government. Before then, I was actually a casual worker with the Supreme Court Library, I was tasked with researching nanobot technology. So that was really fun. I got to work there as my little first little job. By volunteering and being exposed to the real world, it can smack a lot of the fantasy out of life as a lawyer. And I think that's really important. Get smacked. And if you want to be super early with this, high school work experience. So before you've even finished grade 12, you can get experience in the legal field. So when I was 16, I worked with the magistrates court on a volunteer basis. So I got to see cases and I work in the back office and do some admin tasks. I got to know the magistrate. So I was in early, I was keen. I was actually 15 when I was pushing the school teachers to let me out into the world. I want to go to the courtroom. So I think I was 15 or 16 actually. Never too young to start. If you really want it, there's going to be a place for you. Asking questions, starting early, getting stuck in there, throwing yourself into the practical of the real world experience is the smartest and the quickest way to find out whether law school is for you and whether you really do want to go down the legal path. Happy studies to you or happy career path change. Either way, just wish you all the best.